Is San Diego State still headed to the Pac-12? What is that going to look like? And who's possibly coming with them? Welcome to the Voice of College Football. We break down the game we all love each and every day with you. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. We ask that you like the video, share the videos out on social media, and subscribe, of course, and hit that bell for the notifications to know when we go live, which is all the time. And with Big 12 Media Days coming up next Tuesday and Wednesday, July 12th and 13th, we are going to be live constantly with contributors from the Big 12 talking up what is being discussed in Dallas. And specifically, of course, Commissioner Brett Yormark. We know he's going to be asked about San Diego State and other possibilities from the Pac-12 as well and his realignment plans. That is going to be topic number one. As it stands right now with San Diego State, we have outlined through multiple videos and live streams, so take the deep dive with us. We have them posted right here on the channel, but the summary is basically that San Diego State notified the Mountain West Conference here in the past month that they are resigning from the conference, and then a couple communications later, they backpedaled and said, we were just discussing that, looking at our options but we went back into the Mountain West Conference and the conference is saying, no, you left us and they're holding them accountable both in regards to their membership and financially. So again, we have taken the deep dive on that, live streams and uh, videos, so check that out. This is more about will San Diego State still wind up in the Pac-12 and what could that look like? Because Pete Thamel reported that there is no offer from the Pac-12 because we've all believed for months that San Diego State and SMU were headed to the Pac-12, and the only thing that we were waiting on is the same thing that we're all waiting on, and that's a Pac-12 media rights deal, and that San Diego State either wanted to be included in that announcement and that it would all come down at the same time, or they were waiting for the security of a strong media rights deal. You would think that if the Big 12 was interested in San Diego State, that that would be on the table and that would be a done deal. However, that's not been the case. Therefore, it's unlikely that the Big 12 is interested in San Diego State, or maybe San Diego State is waiting for a media rights deal to compare between the Pac-12 and the Big 12 and would rather and prefer to stay in the Pac-12 since they are located in Southern California and could fill that void to a certain extent left by USC and UCLA. And it was stated this week on the Dan Patrick Show that San Diego State is still headed to the Pac-12, followed by SMU with some other possibilities. Let's run down all of the qualifications of all the schools in play and their candidacy to the Pac-12. The Aztecs have a strong football program. They have played in the Mountain West Conference since the year 2000, winning championships in 2012, 15, and 16, Aside from the COVID season of 2020, they've appeared in 12 consecutive bowl games. They are 72 and 30 since 2015, with a final top 25 ranking in 2021, the third in school history. San Diego, of course, brings a strong television market, number 30 in the U.S., with 1.1 million homes. Now, that has risen substantially just in the last couple of years after taking a bit of a dip around the COVID exodus of 2020 and 2021. The Pac-12 cares about academics, and San Diego State brings a relatively good product there. 72nd ranking in public universities by U.S. News & World Report, number 151 in the national university rankings. We already mentioned SMU as the partner with San Diego State being reported to join the Pac-12 together, replacing USC and UCLA. A few months back, Pac-12 Commissioner George Klyovkov was seen at a SMU basketball game and visiting campus. And that seemed to be, wow, done deal. There it is. That's all we need to see. They are not hiding anything. SMU is headed to the Pac-12. Well, What is holding this off? Maybe the San Diego State deal, maybe the Pac-12 rights deal, and maybe all of it needs to come together in one nice little package. In terms of football, SMU has delivered, of course, quite the colorful history. 
a Southwest Conference power when the Southwest Conference was a major brand in college football. SMU won conference championships in 1981, 82, and 84. They finished ranked 11 times total, four straight in the top 12, ending in 1984. But what also ended there was the SMU football product. Massive cheating. We know the history there. They received the death penalty. And it's taken SMU a long, long time to recover from the prominence they had in the 1980s, and they really have not. Uh, After a stint in Conference USA that didn't fare too well, they did join the American Conference, which has been the best of the group of five, and SMU's been a member since 2013 and has been a pretty good football uh, product in the last few years. Since 2019, 32-16 on the field with four straight bowl appearances. The Dallas-Fort Worth market is the fifth largest in the United States, but does SMU football bring it? We know the Dallas Cowboys own the state of Texas, and specifically Dallas, of course. SMU, though, empty seats, smaller stadium than way back in the glory days, certainly when they played at the Cowboys stadium. They may bring better numbers in terms of TV households once they start to play games against the likes of Washington, Oregon, and other teams in the Pac-12. But as of right now, that is a nice potential benefit for the Pac-12, but it's not reality. SMU is ranked 72nd in national universities, according to U.S. News and World Report. That's about 80 spots ahead of San Diego State, so that's pretty significant. Again, SMU brings... A football brand of sorts, a large TV market that's untapped because they're just not that popular, and a fine university, of course. Now we're going to hit two schools that we've talked about in the past, and we have sized them up from all the various angles that we just talked about with San Diego State and SMU. They are long shots, but they were discussed on the Dan Patrick Show this week. Based on our evaluation in the past, they just seem to have too many deficiencies and didn't check enough boxes to be a serious candidate for Pac-12 membership. However, again, mentioned on the Dan Patrick Show, and the first one would be UNLV. The plus is enormous, and it is the one big plus that UNLV has. Location. (laughs) Las Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world. Glitz, glamour all over the place. And more and more sporting events, we've seen it all over the place, are coming to Las Vegas. The NFL has come to Las Vegas. Bowl games have come to Las Vegas. Uh, The Pac-12 championship game coming to Las Vegas, there is just a draw. It's a vacation spot, of course. And if UNLV could latch onto that, that is their trump card beyond anything else. Otherwise, This is a marginal, to be kind, a marginal candidate for the Pac-12. In terms of football, awful, awful. 42-112 and since 2010. There are 70 games under 500 going back past the decade. They have never been ranked. They've been playing football since 1978. They've been a member of the Mountain West Conference since 1999 and never a factor. They played in the Big West initially after some seasons as an independent Then they were a member of the WAC in 1996, 97, and 98. This is the 285th ranked national university, according to U.S. News & World Report, the site that we are using. And then in terms of television market, this comes along with the prominence of the location. The television market is strong. Number 40, 870,000 households, steady growth since 2005 when there were 600,000 homes with televisions in Vegas. The high points are obvious when it comes to UNLV. Now we come to the exact opposite of UNLV in terms of strengths and weaknesses. They are a current uh, Mountain West Conference member as well, and that, of course, is Boise State. The football is amazing. They've got a rabid fan base. They know how to run that football program. But everything else is relatively weak. Boise State, wow. They are the original group of five model program, giant slayer, dragon slayer, monster killer. What a football history they've had. They've got the number one winning percentage in college football this century. They are number one. They've won 14 conference championships since 1999. They have finished in the top 25 
13 times since the year 2002. They went on a run from 2002 through 2012. You're talking about 11 seasons where they finished in the top 10 six times and won 129 games against 15 losses. Now, they've leveled off in recent years, but they're still really strong. 94 and 33 in the past 10 football seasons. Boise State's football is remarkable. They have done just a tremendous job. And it's almost similar to Wisconsin, where it doesn't matter who the head coach is. Uh, the way it was originally built just continues to be sustained and thrive from year to year, from coach to coach and coaching staff, regardless as time marches on. Now the down points. The U.S. News and World Report doesn't even have Boise State exactly ranked because once you get to a certain point on the list, they just group them all together. They are number 330 to 440 in national universities. The television market is 98th in the country, 330,000. However, look at this. It is growing. Go back to just 2020, and there were 260,000 households with televisions in Boise, Idaho, in the metro area, and that has jumped considerably. You're talking from 260,000 to 330,000. That is a jump of like 25 or 30 percent in just three years. In one of our next videos, we're going to take a look at San Diego State, SMU, Boise State, and UNLV and see how those football programs have performed against the Pac-12 and how they project forward if they gain membership in the Pac-12. Meanwhile, leave your comments down below whether you think these schools are going to join this conference in order of most likely uh, membership in the Pac-12. Leave your comments below and let us know what you think about the next uh, landmark of saga as uh, we took this from the Dan Patrick Show and, of course, mostly the recent drama and saga concerning San Diego State in the Mountain West hanging in limbo. San Diego State says, we are still a member of the Mountain West Conference, and the Mountain West Conference says, no, you're not. Give us your money, and you're gone. Now, that could be just a ploy of course, the Mountain West Conference would love to keep San Diego State, but this is the second time this has happened since 2012. They're sick of the shenanigans, and they're going to hold them accountable. However, the Mountain West wants San Diego State to stay. They should probably take this opportunity to lock them in for a long, long time. Again, your comments below. Let's talk it up as we always do. Best discussion, debate, and analysis right here at the Voice of College Football.